Maybe instead of drinking cocktails and smoking filthy old cigarettes, we would have a better America, better men and women, and not so much juvenile delinquency. Whenever you hear of a high priest sitting down, that means that his work is finished. Hallelujah. So when Jesus sat down, brother, the Holy Ghost had to get up. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. That was Marjo Gortner. He started out as a child preacher in the late 40s. He had gained his notoriety when his parents arranged for him to be ordained as a preacher at the age of four. He was the youngest known in that position. Probably like many of you, I had never heard of Marjo Gortner. I had came across him by accident while I was doing other research and had heard his story. And when I listened, I just knew that I had to do a video about him. Ever since Marjo was a child, he was taught the tricks in the trade of scamming church people early on by his parents. He was used by them for this sole purpose. Would like to present to you the world's youngest ordained minister and the world's youngest evangelist, Marjo Gortner. Marjo started preaching when he was three and a half. Today is Marjo's eighth. I remember my mother going through very uh, well correctional activities, you might say, to get me prepared to say uh, the wedding ceremony because I had to re recite the whole uh, Episcopal ceremony verbatim and write my name on the uh, certificate. I'm not sure, but I think they had, you know, a preaching number planned for me coming from such a long background of preachers and my mother being a very flamboyant evangelist. As a child, I'd want to go out and play and we'd have to spend hours and hours, you know, memorizing. And my mind would slip. Finally, my mother would begin to lose her patience with me and she would put a pillow over my head maybe and smother me for a little bit. Other times, she'd hold me under the water faucet, but she never wanted to put any marks on my body because she knew I had to be in front of the press and so she'd never hit me or anything. There would be, you know, gestures like when I would say Jesus, my arms would have to go out. To when I would say the devil, I would go forward. And she had this incredible set of signals. There, like if she would say, "Oh Jesus," if I was going too slow, or she said, "Glory to God," you know, that meant you better speed up and go a little bit faster. Then later on, they came up with more signals like "Praise God" meant you know you've got the people where you need, then you better take an offering and raise some money. <laughs> As Marjo got older, he had gotten burnt out from doing the church scams and had left to do other things. But that wasn't making him much money, so he decided to return to the church and do one last scam. But this time, it was to not only expose himself, but to expose the charismatic false preachers. So he had a film crew follow him around to show the interworkings on how these salesmen preachers are working the churches. If they ask you if you say it, instead of don't hesitate about it, never say, well, uh, yes, I'm uh, the right way. Well, we want to help you and they'll want to lead you. Well, here you want a little scripture, you know, this, maybe this will give you a little comfort. You just come right back and look a straight eye and say, yes, brother, and I'm washed in the same blood as you. Right. You know, I mean, it all comes in the blood. You're hearing all these songs, power in the blood, are you washed in the blood? I mean, it's a very bloody, gory religion that's going down, you know. As long as you say you're washed in the blood, ah, oh, it's cool. How suspicious are they going to be of everybody, though? Is, are they actually going to be? No, they're on, remember they're on your side because they accept me as real, number one. And so if me bringing you in there, they've already accepted you. The only way that there would be a bust is if one of you blow it. That's why, you know, you've got to be very, 
I'm actually over cautioning you so that you'd be really careful because no one is going to say, well, I wonder about those people. Again, there's the Hollywood, the movies and things like that you've got to be careful of, but uh, you want to just be, you know, prepared for it all. And some people, you see, they've taken these prayer calls for their son or their daughter who is in drugs or dope addiction. And they've given that prayer call to them. And I've had many testimony of a young person after they got one of these prayer calls, they were delivered from drugs. I'm telling you, people wow. don't understand. For years, we've been seeing the Jewish people wrapping up, praying in this. And we didn't understand, as Gentile people, the power of this, mm. the prayer shawl, the power, the anointing in mm. the prayer shawl. Jesus. I've heard stories of people uh, that's got healing. I Listen, for the gift of $30, you can get this. Just call wow. today and you Thank send you. your <laughs> gift. I lose prosperity into his life and everything he touches. And when he touches this cloth, oh God, let this anointing that's flowing out of me flow into him, revolutionize his life, and never be the same again because he let go of the old to bring in the new so the new could come in. In Jesus' name, amen. How many believe that God can work this way? Do you believe it? Praise the Lord. I want you to get out the largest bill that you have right now. If you believe, if you don't have that much faith, then you shouldn't come down anyhow. Even young people, anyone who wants to come down, if you want to believe for someone in your life, I want you just to give us a $20 bill is the largest bill you got, then I want you to get that out. If it's a 10, I want you to get that out. If it's only a dollar bill, I want you to get that out. But I'm asking you to prove God with whatever the largest offering that you have tonight. The Lord showed me clearly you're coming out of debt. I want you to say, I'm coming out of debt in 12 months. It's going to happen. There's, there's one guy that gets into it so heavy that he's into, he prophesies. And he told me how he did. He sat right, I mean, he looked right across the table back and forth at me. And, and, and he told me how, you know, how he confiscates money. He says he's on this station. It's over 40 states. And uh, he'll go on there and he'll be, get on the radio and he'll say, I know that listening to my little voice tonight, that there's some lady out there and you've got $10 put away in a cookie jar. Now, God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that $10 and get it in the mail and send it to me. And God will bless you. God will give you a reward such as you have never known before. So what must they do right now? Either sit down, write a check, put four quarters on a card, dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you have right now. But do something. Take action. You see, your need moves God's heart, but your seed moves God's hand. And those that have the thousand, what, what, what do they do? You can put it on you. Debit card, credit card, whatever. You need to get that seed. Anyone else who wants to right now stand to your feet? All right, I want you to make your way. And as I lay hands on you tonight. That's a word. As surely as I'm speaking by the Spirit of God, that is a word for a person right now. That is God penetrating your heart. It's burning on the inside of you, and you need to make a vow of faith of a thousand dollars. Oh, Bob, couldn't you say twenty-five? No. You can't make a thousand dollar vow of faith. I'm saying in faith. So we got people that don't have, teenagers that have no, hardly nothing going for them. They got enough faith to make a thousand dollar vow and send a little five dollars here and ten dollars there as God begins to move like a whirlwind in their lives. Because they don't have that old programming of religion. But this isn't the way we do it in my church. Forget your church. I'm talking about what God says. And if you want the kind of miracles that are in the Bible, you're going to have to do what God said to do. And I've got the faith to believe they'll come to pass. This is hot soil. You know, you don't, you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick. Or as the, the evangelists say, it's a, it's a, a ministry. Like the, it's incredible. They'll say, oh, brother so-and-so, he's got the ministry of laying on of hands. Or he's got the ministry of prophecy. But that's a gimmick. And the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good. And I mean, I used one time, I had a thing where there's a special kind of ink you can buy and you put it on. And with perspiration, when the salt starts to come out and you start to perspire, uh, it'll turn red. And so I painted a cross, you know, I just did a cross like this on my head. And while I was preaching, 
the cross started to show immediately. People started nudging each other, you know, and of course it started, it went away, I think, after a while. It only lasts so long where I wiped away, I don't remember. But afterwards, I mean, like I had that whole audience at one of the biggest meetings that I've ever had because they saw that cross and said, oh, Brother Marge, while you were preaching tonight, the cross was over your head. I mean, that was convinced them, you know, that it was really very, very real and it made it very easy for me to uh, take offerings. You know, it's just signs that make you wonder. And it's, uh, it's, it's really a big deal that we have things we can't explain or understand or control. I've wondered if it's okay to, for us to run to a corner of a room and stand and watch and take pictures. I, I think he rather enjoys it. I think he, uh, as, lo as long as we don't prostitute it for our glory, as long as we give him glory and celebrate, I, it feels like children, you know, just discovering him. You know, we don't seek for signs, but we don't ignore them either. It's kind of dumb if he shows up in a cloud, you go. I don't want to be distracted. I invite all of his distractions. Yeah, sure. North Georgia Ministries oil producing Bible has caught the attention of many. His name is Flowing Oil, caught this Chattanooga Times Free Press faith reporter's eye because of the number of people flocking to its services in Dalton. They got hundreds of people every week to come to their services um, and it was much more focused on sort of worship and then this, this idea that the, the Bible was producing oil. The ministry's website includes testimonies from several people who say the oil from the Bible healed them. Massey says he started to look further into the phenomenon when he received a tip. One of the main leaders of that ministry uh, was, was going to Tractor Supply um, in, in Dalton regularly and, and buying mineral oil. He had vials of the oil from the Bible tested at UTC and it matched the brand of mineral oil from the tractor supply in Dalton. except I had a visit from Jesus, praise the Lord. She put me up to sleep. I don't know how long I was asleep, but I remember I awoke. When I awoke, I was seeing a vision. I remember I looked up out of my little bed and I saw a mass of people. They were perishing. They were crying out for help. They were crying, somebody do something. Now remember, I'm only four years old. And I remember I sat up in my little bed and I looked up and I said, someone help all those people. Then a voice spoke back to me just as clear as though standing right alongside that bed. And that voice said, Marjo, you can help them. And I remember I looked down at myself and I thought, well, I'm just a little boy. I'm only four years old. What could I possibly do? What could I possibly say? And you know that voice spoke back to me and said, as I was with David, so will I be with you. And as I was walking, I looked and I saw a man. He went, hey, Jesse. And I knew him immediately. He was thick barrel chested man. I said, you, you Abraham. He said, yes. Yeah. thought the first person I would meet would be Peter, you know, mm -hmm. at the gate and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Right, right. <laughs> I saw a man, thick barrel chest, huge, with a beautiful robe. He looked of great age, yet he looked young. Mm -hmm. But he looked of great age. And I looked at him and he said, hi, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Call me by my name. And I said, hello. 
He said, are you thirsty? I said, yeah. And he gave me some water out of it. looked like a golden goblet. And I said, who are you? And I, hang on, when y'all say, I'll let you check it in the Holy Spirit. You can believe you want, don't. He said, my name's Abraham, I'm your father.